It means just $700 more in the piggy bank, and yours truly can start tooling around the countryside in a brand new fancy foreign sports car. Oh, oh I see. So unless you can guarantee me a minimum of 700 bucks, why should I travel all the way to Corpus Christi? Possibly miss out on something lucrative around here. Uh, sports car, huh? Oh, the ultra, ultra, George. Slightly over $10,000 worth. You know, it sounds like the little hunk of iron I keep stashed away in my garage. You? Well, you're talking about a Franzetti, aren't you? That's the one, all right. How do you like it? Great, uh, now that I got used to it. What do you mean? Well, have you ever driven one of these dream boats? No, the tight-fisted dealer won't let me touch it until I lay the cash on the line. Why don't you run on down here and give mine a workout, huh? You mean it? Sure. Well, okay. I mean, come on down here and take over this insurance problem for me, and the Franzetti is yours. Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, as long as you like. After handling a case for you. Well, anything wrong with that? No, no, I suppose not. And who knows? Maybe in addition to your expense account, I can dig up a little extra for you. Say, uh, $700? Georgie, you're a doll. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Eternity Mutual Insurance Company office in Corpus Christi, Texas. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Rat Pack matter. Expense account item one, 133.70. Taxi tips and plane fare to Corpus Christi. It was early afternoon by the time the big silver bird set me down at Municipal Airport. Huh? You know, I kind of thought maybe that bait of mine would bring you down here in a hurry. Hi, George. Hi. Well, where is it? Uh, the car. Well, what else? My little sports car. That's right. The Franzetti. Come on, stop beating around the bush. Where is it? Uh, safely locked up in my garage. Are you kidding? Why, not a bit. I came over here in the beat-up old crate that I drive to work. Georgie, you're a dog. But as soon as you've cleared up this mess for me, the Franzetti is yours, all yours. All right, all right, whatever you say. Now, what kind of a mess? Let's put these bags into your car. Uh-uh. Run on into your office in town no, or whatever Johnny, hotel no. you picked out for me, and on the way, you can tell me what it's all about. Did you say no somewhere along the line there? Yeah. Well, why? Because what you're going to use, pal, is one of the new compacts. I've arranged the rental for you, and it's sitting right over there at the curb. What a guy. Because you are taking this job on all alone over in a town called Summit Hill. Summit Hill? Mm-hmm. Named after a hunk of rock sticking up out of the ground, or maybe 40, 50 miles north and west of Skidmore. Where's Skidmore? Oh, maybe 40, 50 miles north of here. I see. Well, what's going on in Summit Hill? Murder, embezzlement, arson, or what? No, no. Summit Hill is a nice, small, well-to-do residential spot. A lot of nice old folks who made enough in oil and gas to retire there with their families. So? But the last couple of months, all we've been doing is writing checks to settle claims. The old folks are dying off. No, 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 no. But like I said, they all have nice homes and a bunch of nice cars. And that's where the damage is being done. What kind of damage? Malicious mischief. Only mischief is too mild a word. Just call it vandalism. Like what, George? I like taking those nice new models out on the back roads and hot-rodding them to death, then wrecking whatever is left of them in a ditch or up against a tree. Well, that sounds to me... I mean, you should see what it does to a pretty sedan or limousine when it's been drag-raced over some of those backcountry roads. And then our company has to foot the bill. You know what that sounds like to me, George? Sure, pal, and you are 100% right. It's the work of a worthless bunch of kids, some rat pack. What's the matter with the police up there? The police department consists of exactly one sweet old man and a couple of half-witted deputies, just as helplessly scared and upset as the rest of the population. Even the police car has been taken out and wrecked a couple of times. But don't the state police get in on a thing like this? I mean, if these kids are using the roads and highways... The minute they appear, even when they've made some careful stakeouts, Johnny, and they're pretty smart at that sort of thing... Why, everything stops. The whole town gets just as quiet as a churchyard. In other words, I'd better not let anyone know my reason for going there. Oh, you're right, pal. 
And you can see why I don't want you taking my pretty little Franzetti along. Yeah, you got a point there. Who knows? Try to cross up those crazy kids? I mean, try to protect your property? Why, they could be killers, Johnny. You think they'd go that far? I know this. Driving a nice car, I wouldn't even want to be in that town, not after dark. But you're perfectly willing to send me up there to tangle with that rat pack. Well, I mean... Well, after all, pal, that sort of thing is your job. Oh, sure. Sure. Well, thanks, pal. Expense account item two, six eighty-five at a stationery store. I bought a large, impressive-looking blank book with a fancy binding. For an extra buck, the stationer carefully stenciled on the cover the words, Official Business, Federal Suburban Population Survey. Then I drove north to Skidmore, took the cutoff, and finally ended up in Summit Hill. There, after going from house to house, asking questions, conducting a mythical survey, I got the impression that this community of six or seven hundred people might have been a very nice place to live. For the older people, that is. If it weren't for a gang of clever young troublemakers... Item three, three dollars for some gas. Well, tell you this, though, mister. Want me to fill up? Yeah, yeah, fill her up. Tell you this. Those dirty, ornery kids try to mess around my car, take it out and wreck it. Well, I got a gun, mister, and I'd shoot first and ask questions after. That's what I do. Pretty bad bunch, huh? Well, you ask me, we better organize some vigilantes around here. Old Chief Foster can't do anything. Never any trouble when the state police come around. So how those kids always seem to know when there's cops around? I can't figure it out. Don't the folks around here keep their cars and garages? Well, most of them, but those fancy houses up on the hill where the money is have open carports. Well, certainly people don't leave the keys in their cars. Don't need to. And those kids use jumper wire. They hot wire them. Well, how do you know they're kids? Anybody actually seen them? Plenty of people, mister. Plenty. Now, then, if their descriptions were given to the police... Descriptions? Well, if you see those Halloween masks they wear and the false beards and the hair and those crazy costumes like a Halloween parade, how could anybody identify them? I see. Now, tell you this. I was that nice Mr. Briley up on the hill with that nice new hot top that was delivered to him today. Briley? Yeah. Well, I sure wouldn't keep it around this town, tell you that. That'll be 286. Compacts don't hold very much. Right. Here you are. I don't bother with the change. Oh, thanks. Well, now you can get on with that survey you're making. Be out of town before dark. Now you said Briarly. Yep. Well, I, um, I seem to have missed that family in my survey. Top of the hill, 27 Summit, please. Okay, thanks. But I'll tell you this, I wouldn't bother tonight. I'd come on back in the daytime. By the time I could grab a bite to eat, that's item four, dollar seventy-five, and get up to the Briarly home on the hill, it was well after dark. The brand-new, expensive hardtop was there in a carport at the side. Yes? Who is it? Uh, Mrs. Briarly. Oh, I see by that book in your hand you're the survey man I heard about. Well, I know it's late, but may I come in? Well, all right. I, I guess it's safe to let you in. Who is it, Mother? It's the survey man, Henry. Now, my name is Dollar, Johnny Dollar. His name is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Oh. Oh, well, you must excuse me holding a shotgun this way. But, uh, Mr. Dollar, I'm always so worried when somebody comes around at night. Well, from what I hear, I can't say that I blame you. Oh, dear Henry, I hope that Frank and his nice girlfriend are all right. At a dance over in Pleasanton? Of course, they're all right, Mother. We're... Really worried about ourselves, Mr. Dollar. Why do you say that, sir? I just don't think we should have bought that nice new car. 
I mean, with all those horrible children around doing such awful things with people's cars. Well, isn't the chief of police, Chief Foster, any help? Oh, he tries, but whenever he puts on extra men to look after folks like us, nothing ever happens. Oh, yes, it does, Mother. But somewhere else in town, to somebody else's car. Well, I'm just... I'm frightened. If only there was something could be done about it, Mr. Dollar. Or maybe something is going to be. By whom? Even the state police haven't been able to do anything. Sure, because somebody's apparently been able to tip off this rat pack. And that means local knowledge. Local knowledge? Of everything that goes on in this town. You think they're local, boys? What else? That couldn't be. Couldn't they? Well, I've looked over this town pretty carefully. I've done a lot of thinking about it. Because of your survey? It looks like a mighty nice place to live. Oh, it is, it is. Uh, it was. Sure. For people of your age. But no baseball field, tennis courts, no movies, things like that. Well, I know. Not even a soda joint with maybe a jukebox. No place where the kids can gather and talk and laugh and dance and let off steam. Oh, we make up for that, Mr. Dollar. We parents, all of us, by giving them everything they want. Our Frankie has a nice home with us and nice clothes and all the money he wants. I see. And his hi-fi and his records and things and all the good books he needs. And all the others of his age have everything, too. That's true, Mr. Dollar. Except, perhaps, for cars. Oh? Well, after all, we don't want to spoil them. You don't want to spoil them. How much do you check up on their activities, say, at night? Well, they are pretty grown up. How old is he? What? The son of yours. Oh, well, Frankie's 22. Mm -hmm. And what does he do for a living? Mm. Work? Well, does he? He doesn't have to, Mr. Dollar. Why should he? And how many other families are there with the same situation? Kids about the same age, plenty of money, nothing to do. Well, practically all of us up here on the hill. Well, then what is the matter with you people? I beg your pardon? Don't you see? Haven't you got brains enough? Wait a minute. Listen. What? Outside the house. All right, now both of you stay right there. I hear it too, Mother. Somebody out at the carport. Oh, no. Is that a pistol you have there? That's right. But what is the matter with this thing? I can't get the chain off. Hey, it's that little pin I put on underneath there. I'll open but it. that gun, Mr. Dollar. Open it for me, will you? Maybe that awful gang out there. Of course it is. Will you open this door, Mr. Brierly, or do I shoot the chain away? No, no, I'll, I'll open it. And I'll lock it again after me. Yeah, but if you go out there, if you try to stop me. All right, now just you... stay inside. All right, you kids. <laughs> Come on back here with that car. Okay, then, just one tire, just one of those. <coughs> so now your gun is empty, huh? What? No, no, don't try to turn around, mister. This switchblade is very sharp. You turn around, it might just cut your throat. <laughs> The switchblade knife at the back of my neck was moved just enough to prove it was razor sharp. I could feel a trickle of blood go down the inside of my collar. Now, you see, man, I don't fool. Now, drop the rod, drop it. Sure. Now, you pick it up, Gene, like we add that one to our collection. That's right. Moving only my eyes, I could see this other one plainly. First, the heavy cotton gloves that picked up my gun. And then, standing there in front of me, the tattered blue jeans and sneakers, the grotesque rubber mask, the sloppy, dirty sweatshirt, on the figure of a girl. Now, why you try and sport our fun, man? Okay, tough guy. Oh, oh, you mean no panic. You're not afraid of me. Well, you're pretty big with that knife in my neck, aren't you? Huh? Well, it seems like you thought you were pretty big when you had that gun. <laughs> Too bad you used up all those pretty bullets, man. But Jeannie knows what to do with it. Well, then you listen to me, Jeannie, whatever your name is. Oh, now, you think we use our real names on a caper like this? Anymore we use our real faces, huh? Well, turn around real slow and see how you like my face. Don't you hear good? I said turn around, but slow and careful, so maybe you don't cut your throat. 
So I started turning. Slowly. Slowly. But then as I felt the edge of the knife leave the back of my neck, I swung out with my left and sent it spinning away. And then I drove a hard right into his midsection. But before I could turn again, my own pistol came crashing down on the back of my head. stretched out on the sofa there in the Briarley's living room, an ice pack on my aching head. The taste of bourbon burning in my throat. Are you, are you all right, Mr. Dollar? <clears throat> uh, a little more of this bourbon? No, here. no, thanks. Oh. When everything was quiet out there and you didn't come back in. Yes, and when Chief Foster called to say our car had been rammed into a tree in front of his place. Sir Henry went outside and found you lying there. Yeah, and, uh, well, I went through your pockets, Mr. Dollar. Oh? You're a special investigator, aren't you? Yeah. You're really here on account of the children, aren't you? And I hope and pray that... No, Frankie isn't one of them. Well, so do I, Mrs. Briarly, but don't bank on it. Uh, Mr. Dollar, uh, I've uh, given a good deal of thought to what you said earlier. Well, it's about time you and a few of the other people around here do more than just think and talk about it, Mr. Briarly. Yeah, I know, I know. We shall. And meantime, Mother and I can only pray that... What's that? Back door. All right, now listen. Hey, Mother? Huh? <sighs> Frankie. What happened to the car? Where is it? I mean, you're snazzy, new. Hey, who's this? Frank, this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Dollar? You mean the big insurance investigator? Hey, this is a privilege. But what happened to you, Mr. Dollar? Where have you been tonight, Frank? Well, girlfriend and I took a bus over to... Hey, Mother, Pop, what's wrong? Those kids again? You didn't know, Frankie? Now, you don't think I'm one of those crazy kids, Mr. Dollar. Are you? No, sir. Now, believe me, I hope not. I swear that, really, sir. But you... You know something, Mr. Dollar? Yeah. Well, maybe... Maybe Pop and Mother won't like hearing this. Uh, what is it, Frankie? Yes, yeah, sir. Well, if you find out who they are, Mr. Dollar, then maybe you can. I've, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Dollar. Well, go on, Frank. Well, you can't really blame them. Oh, I know that what they're doing is wrong. It's wrong, all wrong. But what else have they got to do around this place? They've got to get their kick somehow, don't they? I mean, instead of rotting away in a place like this where there's, where there's nothing for kids to do. And they're afraid to go away and be on their own because where well, their loving parents keep preaching to them, it'll break their hearts. And how could they get along on their own anyway? They and me and all the rest of us haven't ever been given a chance to even think for ourselves. Just tied down here, all of us, because they won't ever let us do anything else. Now, can you blame the kids for wanting to let off a lot of steam? Frank. Can you blame them for trying to... Oh, I don't know what to say, but... But don't you see, Mr. Dollar? It's okay, Frank. We understand. Yes, of course we do, darling. But now, please, you've become so overwrought. I'm perfectly all right, Mother. I'll fix you a nice warm cup of Cambridge tea, darling. No, Mother, please. Just let him work things out for himself, Mrs. Briarly, just once. It's put the poor boys all upset. No, Mary, no. Mr. Dollar's right. Now, Frank. Thanks, Mr. Dollar. That's all right. Now, it's pretty obvious that you know who the members of the Rat Pack are, even if you aren't one of them. I'm not, sir, on my word. But you know them. Now, you want to tell me who they are? Would you think much of me, Mr. Dollar, if I did? These cases of mine usually have big, fat, dramatic endings, and the devil with any kind of a message. Well, not so this time. I honestly don't know whether I did the right thing or not on this one. Too much faith in the younger generation? Well, maybe I have. But the next evening, 
There at the home of the Briarleys, there was a meeting of parents. Of all the wealthy, doting, indulgent parents of all the kids in their late teens and early 20s. Well, I tore into those parents, and by the time I'd finished, there were plenty of red faces among them. Incidentally, a couple of times out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw the face of a teenager in the shadows outside one of the windows. What I said to those people in laying down the law to the... Well, I honestly don't remember exactly. But it must have given them a jolt. And if they carry out their plans, there won't be a kid in that town with an idle moment on his hands. But their activities, their projects will be their own with as little parental advice and guidance as possible. Then, the following night, thanks to a tip-off by young Frank, without the knowledge of his parents, I barged in on a meeting of the kids, seven or eight of them. As I might have expected, they were there in their foolish masks and makeup, knowing that I'd be among them. And if you think I'd been rough on their parents, but again, by the time I'd finished with them, I guess you're the only one in this town, Mr. Dollar, ever remembered he was a kid once. Yeah, I so. But even if you're right, even if you got somewhere with the old folks, what happens now? We all go to jail for all those crazy things we did? Well, I'd say that depends on you. You certainly might if you keep on with this silly juvenile masquerading. Well, what do you say, whoever you are behind that corny mask? Oh, okay, I'll take it off. Yeah, me I'll too. Take mine off. See, Mr. Dollar, maybe you don't know it, but... Some of us heard what you said to our folks last night. Did you? Yes, sir, we did. And we heard what they're going to do. Not, not for us, but, w but with us. I, I mean, if they really do... Sure they will. I'm betting on them. But what will you kids do? Well, sir, if it means anything, I'll somehow earn the money. A and I don't mean for my folks. I'll pay for all the damage I've done. You got my word on it, Mr. Dollar. Yes, sir, Can I Mr. Miss Dollar. Now, as long as you know who we are, and as long as you got to report us to the police and all that, well, my name... Why? Is... Huh? Well, you, you got to know who we are, don't you? Well, like I said, that depends on you. And I mean from here on out. I have seen you now. I can come back here and identify every one of you. If I ever have to. B believe me, Mr. Dollar, yes, believe sir, me. Dollar, yes, sir, we promise you. All right. Now, it's up to all of you. Well, I sure hope I did the right thing by simply leaving it the way it stood. And yet, what else could I have done? Have them all locked up for something that was only partly their doing? Try to make them into criminals? I don't think so. Incidentally, because of a call to get right back to Hartford, I never did drive George Franklin's Franzetti. But I did get that $700 fee, and that'll help me buy one of my own. Expense account total, including... Oh, what am I talking about? This one is on the cuff. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Well, next week, a doll, a purple doll, and all that goes with it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato, Jr., Heard in our cast were William Redfield as George, Gertrude Warner as Mrs. Brierly, Phil Meter as Frank, Jack Grimes as the kid, Roger DeCoven as the gas station attendant, and Bob Dryden as Mr. Brierly. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan McDonald speaking.